In course of this video, the properties of linear resistor capacitor circuits will be discovered. The simplest type of an RC circuit consists of one resistor and one capacitor switched in series. Here you can see three linear RC circuits switched in parallel, enabling the observation of different devices at a single blow. The left branch consists of a 16 kilo ohm resistor and a 470 microfarad capacitor, the middle one of a 33 kilo ohm resistor and a 470 microfarad capacitor, and finally the right one of a 16 kilo ohm resistor and a 1800 microfarad capacitor. Initially, the capacitors are discharged, hence almost no voltage drop can be detected. After closing the loops by connecting the circuits to a 5V computer power supply, the capacitors get charged. The maximum current running through a single resistor capacitor loop is limited by the total resistance of each circuit, while the voltage drop at the capacitors is affected by the amount of charge accumulated at the device in relation to its capacitance. Consequently, there is the higher the resistance, respectively the capacitance of the circuit, the lower the voltage drop at the capacitor after a fixed span of time. The maximum rate of change can be detected at the beginning, while there is just a slight increase in voltage after some time has passed by. All three curves tend to the value of the constant input voltage. So what about the voltage drop across the resistor? The voltage is maximum at the beginning of the charging procedure, falling exponentially to zero. In contrast to the capacitor, the voltage drop across the resistor after a fixed span of time is increasing with increasing resistance, respectively capacitance of the circuit. If the capacitance of an RC circuit and its input voltage are kept constant, while the resistance increases, the same amount of charge is accumulated inside of the capacitor, however the time required for the electrons to enter the device is increasing. With an increasing capacitance, the total charge entering the device is also increasing while the input voltage and the resistance are kept constant. Remember that the correlation between current and voltage is linear at an ohmic resistor. The charge current is decreasing over time. The amount of charge entering the capacitor per time interval is decreasing because of the fact that the difference in voltage between the constant input voltage and the voltage drop across the capacitor is decreasing too. During the whole charging procedure, the directed sum of the electrical potential differences around the closed network is zero. In other words, the voltage drop across the resistor plus those at the capacitor equals the absolute value of the input voltage. While the voltage drop at the capacitor is increasing over time, those at the resistor must be decreasing. If the input voltage of a resistor capacitor circuit drops to zero, the charged capacitor discharges its stored energy through the resistor. An equivalent circuit consists of a charged capacitor and a resistor switched in parallel. While the capacitor gets discharged, the voltage drops from the initial value down to zero. The current running through the circuit is highest at the start of the procedure and the voltage drop at the resistor equals those at the capacitor, except the sign of the value. This is because the charged capacitor operates as the voltage source of the circuit. The higher the capacitance or the resistance of the circuit, the higher the voltage drop after a fixed span of time. In theory, the discharging respectively charging procedure lasts for an infinite span of time, but in practice you won't be able to detect a voltage drop different from zero respectively different from the input voltage after a certain span of time. Therefore, the time required for the voltage to fall to the initial voltage divided by Euler's number is often used to characterize an RC circuit. Though span of time is called RC time constant and it is denoted by the Greek letter tau. If an RC circuit is connected to a square wave signal, the capacitor gets periodically charged respectively discharged. 
Besides the resistance and the capacitance of the circuit, the maximum voltage across the capacitor depends on the switching frequency of the input signal. The higher the frequency, the lower the peak voltage. The voltage across the capacitor tends to half the peak voltage of the symmetric square wave signal at the input clamps. Likewise, the peak voltage across the resistor is decreasing with increasing switching frequency, however the root mean square voltage, represented by the absolute area bounded by the graph and the X axis, is increasing. Furthermore, the polarity of the signal is altering whenever the capacitor gets charged, respectively discharged. Let's discover the properties of the circuit while being connected to a sinusoidal signal. The curve progression of the output signal at both devices is sinusoidal too, however there is a phase angle of 90 degrees between the signal at the resistor and those at the capacitor. The absolute current running through the circuit and so the voltage drop at the resistor is maximum, while the absolute rate of change of the voltage across the capacitor is highest. With increasing frequency, the peak voltage across the capacitor is decreasing, while those at the resistor is increasing. If the output is taken across the capacitor, High frequencies are retracted, while low frequencies are passed. The circuit behaves like a low pass filter. In contrast, if the output is taken across the resistor, high frequencies are passed, while low frequencies are rejected. In this configuration, the circuit behaves like a high pass filter. The range of frequencies that passes the filter is called bandwidth. With increasing resistance, the voltage drop across the resistor is also increasing at a fixed input frequency, while those at the capacitor is decreasing. Besides the variation of the peak voltage, the phase of the output signal in comparison to the input signal varies also with varying frequency. The resulting phase angle between the voltage across the resistor, which correlates to the current running through the circuit, and the input voltage is always greater than zero and lower than 90 degrees. Those phase angle is decreasing with increasing frequency. By connecting a high pass filter to the output clamps of a low pass filter, the bandwidth that passes the whole circuit is cut off at high and low frequencies. At the start of the measurement, the output signal at the high pass filter is increasing with increasing frequency. When the signal gets close to the peak voltage of the output signal of the low pass filter, it reaches its maximum value. The output signal of the high pass filter can't overrun its input signal, which is the output of the low pass filter. Hence, it is decreasing with the decreasing signal of the low pass filter at high frequencies. Only specific frequencies are passing those circuit, which is why it is called band pass filter. A well known use of such filters is in sound recording and reproduction. By using several filters in conjunction with amplifying circuits, the balance between frequency components within an electronic signal can be adjusted. An equalizer is used to strengthen or weaken the energy of specific frequency bands. So that's all about resistor capacitor circuits for today. Thanks for watching and I'll be back.